everybody this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria and today I'm bringing you my review of the Prince Phantom 93P. So I talked a bit about the 1820 93P in my last video the 18 by 20 comparison video liked that and I'll be reviewing the 2018 version of that racket and I've been able to get hold of the most recent version of the 93P in that open string pattern the 14 by 18 and it seems the general consensus is that the updates was kind of largely cosmetic between the 2018 and 2020 versions. So this should still be pretty current. Obviously the major difference uh, is the string patterns and subtle differences in weight as I'll go through. But one thing to note is the most recent version has been updated with an anti-torsion system which combines the tech stream and Tauron find this across the shaft and also 10 and 2 and I personally think that that might have made a little bit of a difference actually we all know how good Tauron can be in rackets if you think about classic heads and maybe that was one factor as to some of the findings in this review. So the specs on the 1820, we have a 93 square inch head, of course, mid-size racket, 18 by 20 string pattern, 30.5 centimeter balance point unstrung, 330 grams weight and a 61 RA. With the 14 by 18, we have that 93 square inch head, 14 by 18 string pattern, 31 centimeter balance unstrung with a 325 unstrung weight and a 62 RA. And the first feature that I wanted to talk about a little bit is the beam. So hitting with both of the rackets in good conditions indoors and from the baseline, you get a really enjoyable experience. It is of course mid-size, very accurate. It's fast through the air, but it also does have a fair amount behind it. And I think there's sort of two reasons for that when it comes to punch and plow through. First of all, we have healthy weights. The 14 by 18 has that 325 gram unstrung weight. We have the 330 grams on the 1820, but also check out those beams. So we have 16.5 millimeter beam in the shaft, rising to 19.5 millimeters uh, at the sides. And then at the tip, we've got a 20.5 millimeter beam. So that kind of uh, increasing graduating beam, I think gives you that fast feeling through the air. It's obviously sort of flexible, but then you do get a nice bit of plow through on contact, particularly if you're swinging fully. Second thing that I wanted to talk about feature wise applies to both again, and that is the shape of the racket. Now, similar to the gravity and its bigger brothers, the phantom lines across the 100 square inch ranges. So we have quite a circular racket. Now I've come to understand, partly through the community actually, who've dropped some comments through on this and from hitting with the gravity in particular a little bit more, that I think the reason that I don't really get on with the gravity and maybe the phantom lines at 100 square inches is of course because the it is engineered to have a sweet spot that rewards, I guess, hitting towards the top end of the racket. And I've come to realize through um, videos, taking clips of myself, that I always tend to connect in the middle of the racket. And that might be something to do with me being a bit old fashioned. Uh, however, what I've found with the 93P is that that circular shape does increase sweet spot for me but it also means that with me hitting in the middle of the racket, I do get benefit from it. So whereas I don't really get on with that gravity and the phantom with this, that head size, I do seem to with the 93P. So I suspect that the sweet spot is kind of brought back a little bit to the middle of the racket because of the smaller head. And that's a real positive thing for me. I actually felt that the sweet spots on these rackets were pretty generous, giving it was a 93. If you were to pick it up without knowing it, you would hit and think, yeah, the sweet spot is relatively difficult to find next to a lot of modern rackets, but it's probably comparable to a lot of the 95 square inch rackets that are on the market now. So how do they play? Well, from the baseline, 
probably as you would expect. Fast through the air, do have a good bit of weight. So if you are attacking and taking full swings, as I mentioned, you do get lots of reward, pinpoint accuracy. And I actually found that particularly indoors, rallying with both of the rackets from the baseline was a pleasant experience. I was mindful of the launch angle with the 1820, so I strung that up with Dunlop Black Widow, quite low at 52 pounds. And as you can probably see from these clips, the launch angle was pretty good as a result, and I was able to generate quite good spin. With the 14 by 18, a real open pattern, albeit within quite a small head, I didn't really have the same launch angle concerns. So I strung that up with Selinko Hypergee and went a little bit tighter, uh, 55 pounds. That worked really, really well. And I have to say that the 14 by 18 really surprised me. As someone, as you know, who gravitates towards a denser string pattern, I was really quite surprised by the 14 by 18 and I'd only really started hitting with it for this review. And I actually found that, yes, it is a bit of a hybrid. It's a mid-size, open pattern, quite unique in the marketplace but I actually really enjoyed it particularly indoors I felt that you know you do get that pinpoint precision and for me the more I've hit with rackets head size is oh so important with regards to control and precision and that string pattern does give you a little bit of extra pop a little bit of extra depth uh, you can get good spin you can definitely get really good angles with this racket however I do think that you need to be pretty advanced you need to be taking full swings and you also need to have good timing and be, or, or try to get on the front foot when you're playing with this racket. It was probably a little bit of a different experience outside. Generally, I didn't feel quite as confident, I guess, with either racket as I would with um, larger head sizes or my racket of choice. And I think the outside conditions, particularly in the winter in the UK, maybe exposed that sweet spot a little bit. I have to say I found that the 14 by 18 was preferable in that regard. I think the sweet spot is perhaps a little bit better. It's a bit more forgiving. One thing I'm starting to notice as well is that the racket is probably a little bit challenging on defense. I certainly don't think either of these are rackets for your kind of counter punchers who are just looking to defend, defend, defend all the time and stay in real long rallies. In terms of wider play, I actually found serving with both of these rackets was quite a pleasant experience. There's, it's obviously fast through the air and there is a bit of mass, 325 with the 14 by 18 unstrung, 330 with the 18 by 20. And that combination does mean you can generate some good pace. And of course it is pinpoint accurate with everything that you do. So you can hit your targets. I also think you can hit some pretty good kicking second serves and you can get great slice. So these rackets excel on serve for me. Uh, apologies, I managed to delete the clips um, and I did take some really good clips of some volume drills that I did with these rackets because there, I actually found it was a really good racket on volley too. It did make me sort of kind of consider whether this would be a good doubles racket maybe. And then how were the rackets during match play? So similar in as much as indoors, I enjoyed them both. However, it does make you want to hit out and attack. And I don't know whether that was the rackets characteristics, I think it probably was, but I was recognizing the qualities that it would bring you and realizing the potential downside. So. I was really trying to get on top on points early, looking to play angles, looking to hit out and get to net more than I would with other rackets. One thing that I would say is that my backhand is, is pretty solid, technically good. My forehand is a little bit old fashioned, is probably the shot that I still attack with. And I found that this racket was brilliant on my forehand. I suppose overall, you know, I kind of lack the lag the the greats and the pros get in their forehand. Uh, but I found this racket with that real sort of maneuverability really helped me. I was hitting shots that I probably would feel a bit nervous about with other rackets, even my racket of choice. So it's kind of whippy nature and pinpoint precision combined with a good bit of mass really helped my forehand, I found, and I could dictate points with my forehand in good conditions against players who are better than me and probably get some really good results. Although I have to say that that was playing indoors. 
outdoors in points i mean it was becoming quite similar it was kind of great fun you just try and put things away as soon as you can you try shots that you might not otherwise and i was finding that this was awesome in a sort of casual setup if you're just playing around with somebody playing casual points in matches that don't matter it's a joy you just uh, play around with it and actually play really well i was really mindful however of um, if i was in a match, I don't think I'd have the confidence with either racket to use them in a match that mattered. And I think the tangible things around that are uh, outside in sort of conditions that aren't perfect, which ultimately, particularly in the UK, is typical, then the sweet spot is quite exposed and um, it does struggle on defence. There's a few occasions where I was looking to dig a ball out and I just didn't really get the response that I need and other players were putting then the ball away. So it does have weaknesses. So how do they compare and which is the one to go for? Well, so the 1820 in the 93 square inch head for me is just a step too far. I do think that people who are interested in this racket overall will gravitate towards the 18 by 20. But for me, the sweet spot there is probably too small. And I also felt that it does overall just lack something when it comes to that little bit of punch the 14 by 18 and maybe the anti-torsion system in the newer version for me does make a difference i was gravitating towards the 14 by 18 and that is said by someone who gravitates towards denser, denser string patterns so the 14 by 18 for me is closer to being credible and something that you really should consider playing with if you value precision control in your racket characteristics However, I am left with a sense of, oh, why so extreme on both rackets? You're left kind of picking between a really open pattern that's a bit odd in this sort of racket and then something that is just way too dense. And you do yearn for something in the middle. And I think even if there was a 16 by 19 string pattern in the same 93, then that would be great or if they just took the 18 by 20 and turned that into a 95 square inch head, that could be dynamite. So it's a bit kind of typical prints, isn't it? I like prints, I like the fact that they bring new things to the market and I applaud them for that, but it's just a little bit too far and they're so close to getting something that people would use a lot but they just gone a little bit too extreme. And maybe with a lot of their lines, actually, if they went a little bit more in the middle, a little bit like that Phantom 100X that I reviewed recently, and they gave that a little bit more backbone, wow, what a racket that would be. Uh, and that's the case, I think, with this one. You know, yes, go for a smaller head, maybe a 95. Yes, make it control orientated 1820. There's some amazing characteristics in this racket, but I don't think it's gonna have mass appeal. I'll certainly hold on to the 14 by 18. I have wondered whether it could be a good racket to train with occasionally, because it does make you move quickly and it has that smaller sweet spot certainly thanks for watching next ones on the schedule is the dunlop fx 500 that i'm reviewing at the moment it's difficult to hit at the moment the uk has got new strains and all sorts of lockdowns that's called something else tier four but it really is a lockdown so limited playing time but i've also got the new head radicals to review the uh, new pro staff to review too so plenty of interesting ones coming up so drop a subscribe if you want to see those and if you're feeling generous today then like this video too as that really helps me out see you soon